Minnesota and North Dakota have dozens of newly elected officials getting ready to take their new offices after our midterm elections. In the U.S. Senate race in North Dakota, Republican Kevin Kramer defeats Heidi Heitkamp 55 to 44 percent. And in the race to replace Kevin Kramer in the House of Representatives, Kelly Armstrong beats Max Schneider. And in the Minnesota governor's race, Tim Walls leads Jeff Johnson 54 to 42 percent. Minnesota U.S. Senators Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith will both keep their seats in Washington. U.S. Congressman for Minnesota's 7th District Colin Peterson is projected to win his seat over David Hughes. And it looks like Keith Ellison will take the race for Minnesota State Attorney General. He leads Republican Doug Wardlow 50 to 44 percent for that vote. And in a historic night, replacing Ellison in Congress will be Ilhan Omar, who is one of the first ever Somali-American women to be elected to Congress. Also making history, the city of Moorhead has a new mayor, Jonathan Judd, who is the first African-American mayor elected with more than 50 percent of the vote. While the blue wave the Democrats hoped for never quite materialized, their momentum was enough to get them to retake control of the House. The question becomes, what now? With a divided Congress and divisive politics, what is actually going to get done? Casey Hunt is here with a closer look. This morning, campaign rhetoric meets congressional reality. While some candidates discussed impeachment on the campaign trail. American people must stand up and I say they must call for his impeachment. That's likely off the table for the House. With a Republican-held Senate unlikely to vote to remove the president from office, Democrats will likely look to spend their newfound political capital in other places. At the top of the list, investigations with their newly earned subpoena power. The public may finally get a look at President Trump's personal tax returns, some three years after he promised repeatedly to release them. Democratic lawmakers are expected to use the House Oversight and the House Intelligence Committees to take closer looks at the White House. And perhaps the most volatile issue, the Mueller probe and a revival of the House's Russia investigation, which controversial Congressman Devin Nunes will no longer chair. Devin <coughs> Nunes will now dissolve back into obscurity. We're going to look at the work that the GOP obstructed uh, on our committee. As well as some of the administration's most divisive actions, like the child separation policy at the border and the response to the devastation of Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Also expect a more critical look at the president and his family's private businesses, including their dealings with foreign countries, specifically those with heavy investment in Trump properties. One big question is who will lead all of this? Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi led the party the last time the Democrats held the majority. But according to NBC News exit polling, she's one of the least popular figures in U.S. politics. But for now, she's enjoying a victory lap for her party. The American people want peace. They want results. In an early morning tweet, the president writes, quote, if the Democrats think they're going to waste taxpayer money investigating us at the House level, then we will likewise be forced to consider investigating them for all of their leaks of classified information and much else at the Senate level, too, can play at that game, end quote. A Grand Forks man was taken to jail after he allegedly assaulted another man with a knife. Police got the call around 3 yesterday afternoon at 1108 North 39th Street for a disturbance between two people at an apartment complex. That's when police say they found a 65-year-old Grand Forks man who had been injured in a knife attack. Police then located and arrested 37-year-old Dickie Demery on charges of aggravated assault. Police say Demery knew the victim and that the attack appears to be a targeted incident. The victim's injuries are unknown at this time. Police are investigating the death of a 66-year-old man whose body was found in a Minnesota field. The Polk County Sheriff's Office says it was called in around 8 o'clock last night just outside of Fertile. The man is identified as Timothy Burhow of Grand Forks. He had been hunting on the property and was found by a friend. Foul play is not suspected. A 19-year-old man has been found guilty in a fatal shooting that killed a Minneapolis man and a baby. Joaquin McInnes was found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of 20-year-old Gustav Christensen II and 7-month-old Jaden Redden. McInnes was 17 when he was indicted by a grand jury. Prosecutors say McInnes had a dispute with Christensen and shot him while he was in the back seat of a car. The baby, strapped in the car seat, was also hit by gunfire and died at a children's hospital. 
The owner of two dogs that authorities say attacked a seven-year-old girl and her mother in Mandan last summer has been ordered to pay $10,000 in restitution. The Bismarck Tribune reports that Antoinette Fleck recently pleaded guilty in municipal court to violating the city's vicious dog ordinance. She was ordered to pay restitution for the victim's medical bills and lost wages and also $500 in fines and court fees. Authorities say these dogs right here attacked the girl and her mother that while they were walking on July 22nd. The girl suffered a broken leg and also needed hundreds of stitches. The dogs were euthanized after this attack. In our consumer alert this afternoon, Duncan Hines has voluntarily recalled four of its cake mixes. The company is recalling its classic white as well as three other varieties made at the same time. Those are the classic yellow cake, classic butter golden cake, and the signature confetti cake. All of the mixes were 15.25 ounce packages with best if used by dates on the top of the box of March 7th through the 13th for 2019. If you have the impacted mixes, you're advised to return them to the place where you bought them.